Hello and welcome to show number 20 of Global Perspectives with Dr. Michael Lightman, where we discuss what's happening in the world today. Hello, Dr. Lightman. Hello, Nikuram. Hello, everyone. This topic is uh, a little more local relating to Israel, but it's something that a lot of uh, countries are dealing with. So I thought it would be relevant to, to bring it up here. And the topic is dignified living allowance. Um, Justice Minister Avinis and Kohn and uh, Minister of Local Affairs and Social Services Itzik Shmuli are leading um, a campaign that could help a lot of people under bankruptcy processes, uh, among others because of the coronavirus crises. And they've established a federal team to determine the way to calculate the sum that's required for a dignified living allowance. In other words, a sum that will help people live with dignity. Uh, that will remain in the hands of people who went bankrupt, according to the new law of bankruptcy in Israel. Minister uh, Shmuli uh, wrote that, or said, that for the first time, the state of Israel will determine officially what are dignified living allowance? By the way, it's not exactly accurate. I checked it. Social Security already has uh, a certain uh, calculator where you can actually calculate how much you deserve in order to be able to live with dignity. But <clears throat> uh, what, is, what is first is that in this case, they will determine that a, that a person who went bankrupt will not get less than that amount. Um, so he determined that it's the first time the state of Israel will determine the dignified living allowance, uh, jeopardizing which will constitute um, a jeopardy to a person's most basic rights for dignity uh, and, and, and his basic rights as a citizen. He said paying debt is important, but nothing justifies jeopardizing a person's dignity. When I, when I read uh, the story about this, it reminded me that many years ago, at least 10 years ago, I think, you uh, were talking about exactly the same concept, that people would get a certain allowance, a certain amount of money, which will not be unemployment uh, benefits or any kind of regular benefits, but that will be a, a set amount that will enable people to live with dignity. And you gave all kinds of criteria uh, that stipulated when a person is entitled to get that money. So, so my first question is, when you said dignified living allowance, what did you mean by that? I meant that all citizens due to the education that they will get under which they will change and improve to the state that Bala Sulam wrote about a hundred years ago. That everyone will receive more or less, well, according to per capita, according to the number of people in the family and age and so on, but more or less everyone will get a uh, more or less equal sum of money per capita and will not need more because everything else they will concede it to the benefit of others and this is how a country or a society promises the entire nation to be able to exist in dignity on the one hand on the other hand makes sure that there's no one that suddenly has nothing like it happens today. And this how we live. I think that it is a law that should exist in Israel. It should have been legislated a long time ago, since if our goal is to reach being as one man and one heart and mutual responsibility and guarantee and so on, love your neighbor as yourself, it results in care and concern for everyone to at least have a basic income for them to be able to exist on a normal level 
like everyone else. This is something that we have to determine. But again, I talked about this only on condition that people will get the right education. Then they will understand that living in the same standard, having the same standard for everyone is something great and unique, and that by that we achieve equivalence of form with nature, and then we will succeed in everything else for sure. When you talk about education, what do you mean? I mean that we have to educate a person how to be connected with society in one kli, in one desire, in one intention for him to know why is he connecting to other people and why eventually do we have to reach a state of love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, how does this education relate to a dignified living allowance? Because only after a person will know, feel, and understand that this is the right thing, then gradually can we determine between us a standard of living for all of us. Social Security website and uh, found the calculator, which I didn't know existed, and I calculated how much I. Uh, should get according to what Social Security has right now, according to their standards right now. And it turns out mm -hmm. that it's a lot more, a lot more than what I'm getting right now. I mean, if I got the, the dignified living allowance from Social Security right now, my standard of living would rise significantly compared to what it is today with what I make uh, these days. Um, how can, it, how can the, 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 the state pay such hefty sums if, if we're talking about a, a dignified living allowance that's, that's obviously a lot more than many people make these days? I don't think it's a problem. I think that the problem is... Correct distribution, just distribution. It's not that we don't have the money. It's not a problem to find where to take this money from in order to distribute it correctly. According, even according to the calculation of Social Security, and I'm not even sure that that's the correct calculation, but there is money, but in just... First of all, um, if, if, if I get more than I do now, then someone else will get less. I don't think so. Someone will get less, but still they'll get more than they deserve, okay. than they need. Um, but, but wouldn't that cause social problems? If you start, because once a person gets a certain amount of money, it's very hard for him to... to Mister. Let's share cards, all of us. How much do you get? How much do you need to give to the army, to give to the needy, to those that are retired, children, ill, sustain different systems that we have to have, like any other society? And then let's see what we're left with and divided between all people equally equally on condition that we make sure that we get from everyone a sum that is in accordance, relatively in accordance with what he makes and owes to society. I know that there, is, that there are companies that make millions and billions and don't even pay taxes. So what is there to talk about? Who better than you knows human nature? If I, if I, if something, if I get something and then it's suddenly taken away from me, it doesn't matter if it's justified or not. I can't accept it. What will compensate uh, that... For, for people to, to, to be able to relinquish a certain amount of money um, and not, not protest and not just, I don't know, cause social chaos. Because if you start taking away from entire sectors, 
big amounts of money, they need some sort of compensation for it, no? That's why I said that, first of all, there has to be an educational system for the entire nation, for society. That's working properly for several years, and then accordingly we'll be able to start making these changes in society. What kind of compensation will this education system uh, give me that will allow me to to willingly uh, bring down my salary? We will publicize everywhere that Mr. Chaim Ratz has reached a state and understanding the recognition a new kind of attitude and approach that he didn't have before toward the nation and the country that he is willing every month to add out of his own pocket another $200,000, suppose. And he's happy that he now understands and that he can do it knowingly, knowing that Needy people will be better off. Dignified living allowance, I will get respect. Respect, you'll be taken into consideration. Yeah, everything that you can't buy with money. Today, people that have money are hated. And this way, you'll get love and respect. Interesting. Um... What interesting, what's interesting, think, how you relate to a person that you know that he has a good heart and he shares with you really equally what he has for you to have it too. How will you treat that person? They get uh, a lot of respect and I think it's important for them as well, but you can still see that people are chasing money. They're not chasing people's respect and people's love. They're still chasing money. Until we correct our ego and use it only for the sake of a corrected society for everyone to benefit from, that will elevate our values to a general level for everyone. Until then, we will have to compensate people in different ways, and also those people that will take more from than before. We will have to tell about them, give them some kind of compensation for those sums that they make, and then give it to society. When I told you that uh, there's already a calculator on the Social Security site, you said, I don't know who, who made the criteria. Who do you think is certified to make the criteria for what is regarded as dignified living allowance? I think it should be doctors, social workers, mothers, these kinds of organizations, but on condition that they will be unrelated to parties or personal interests. I don't know, it's my assumption that um, those who built the calculator are probably social workers or people like that, people who are in touch with Usually, they're part of some party, political party, and then they do what their managers tell them to do. Today, I don't believe anyone, because we're after the biggest egoistic involvement ever in history, and therefore, there's no organization or political party or government or a part of it that are clean of egoistic calculations. You're not related to any party, so I can ask you, how would you uh, determine the criteria for, uh, for a dignified living allowance? By what standards, by what uh, measurements? 
I don't know. Again, everything's related to the level of education, to education itself. Through this education, we have to pass everyone, grown-ups, children, parents, everyone. And accordingly, we will be able to bring the entire nation closer to a system that they go through, out of which they come on a new equal standard of living. And then, more or less, we can determine what every person can have, every citizen. Um, so, so before, you're saying that before we determine the sum that's, rec that's regarded as a dignified living allowance, you say we have to take the people through a, an educational process before we even determine the amount of money. Better. Mm. Of course. How can you give a business owner, a millionaire, and or a family with many children the same sum, the same amount of money? I have a neighbor who has five kids. He has wife and five kids, and they have a three-room apartment. And next to us, there is the area where richer people live, where there are, you know, two adults and a cat, and um, they don't have kids, or they do tops one, they have maximum one child, and they have ten times more than my neighbor has. So what are you going to do? How can you bring them to an equal standard of living? Meaning it's impossible, only on condition that we, through education, will be willing to do it, that we're ready for it. And gradually, over time, we change the face of society, where the main thing for us become uh, it becomes for us to be connected between us on an equal standard of living. And then what kind of compensation does everyone get? everyone, not only the rich, that by that we discover the meaning of life, the purpose, the goal of life, the next world. As it says, you shall see your world in your lifetime. You have to think, what are you going to pay them, each of them, in favor of them willing to listen to you and keep do what you're offering. It could take, it could take time, could take time. We will have no world left. Until then, you will build an educational system, insert it into the nation, allow the entire nation to work on it, go through it until you bring them to a state where they agree that they're willing, that they want it, then they themselves gladly come and participate. It's not that you do it to them, but you give them an explanation that's based on the laws of nature, on human nature, on society, and then they do agree to all those changes because they see that there's no other way. And then they do it themselves. And it's not that you have to bend them to do something, that you're all the time asking, what are you going to do with them? I don't want to do anything to them. I just want to give them education to explain the laws of nature to them and the laws of human society, and that they, as a result, will understand what they have to do necessarily. And they, together, will determine, as a result of their education, of my education that I give them. Well, it's not mine, but suppose. They will determine the changes, how, what, at what pace, what, who has to start, who has to come in later into this system of new education for society, and this society is called the last generation. Why the last generation? Because there is no more whole or perfect society. No, last isn't, uh, it's not for the worse, but for the better, that it's the end of all changes and suffering of humanity. 
They won't suffer. They'll do it gladly. They will build a new society. You can call it a socialistic society. It doesn't matter. All these words are, you know, they're completely depleted of their content. But it is a society that will build itself in such a way that they will correspond the laws of nature. And therefore, they won't have to change anymore because they will be in connection and unity with nature. And therefore, that society will be a society that will know how to manage itself, navigate itself, educate, do everything with itself, on itself, because all the laws of nature will be in its hands. It seems like the coronavirus is affecting profound social changes all over the world. Is this a correct uh, statement? Ken. Yes. How is it doing so? Because I heard you say as soon as as soon as COVID started, you said this isn't just some virus. It's going to teach us. It's going to teach us how to treat each other. It's going to teach us. It's going to change society. Now I don't see how the virus is changing us. I don't see how it's teaching us. But what I do see is that changes are happening. There is the virus, and then there are changes that are happening pretty much according to what you said. But I don't see the connection between the two. Can you show it to me? <laughs> Look. The virus didn't come to correct us. It didn't come to change us. It came to show us that we have to correct ourselves and change. And therefore, we're in a situation here where we don't understand what's going on, who's toying around with us. And things are simple. This virus came in order to show us that we are far from one another, incorrectly connected with one another, wanting to benefit off each other all the time, that we're immersed in our ego, and that from morning till evening we're only thinking about how to benefit ourselves and preferably at the expense of others. And this is a simple egoistic form that this is how our nature developed us, and this is what we came to. Now the question is, how do we continue? And here comes this virus, slowly, slowly, starting from afar. It's something that comes from nature, according to the same laws of nature, that nature it's developing for millions of years. So it will develop us for a few dozens of years, no problem. But we see that it doesn't work according to our egoistic calculation, but it goes according to a different kind of calculation. What kind? We'll have to learn. So the wisdom of Kabbalah explains that we have reached a state called the last generation that from this point on, all of humanity as a whole, in general, everyone in the world starts to move toward correction. And the correction is only in the direction of our connection above the egoistic forces. And this is where the problem is, above the egoistic forces. It was a, a were it against our ego, let's destroy it, eradicate it, build something anew. But no, no, it's love covers all crimes. This is the way, and hate, and envy, and lust, and everything, all those bad things that a person has in his nature, this is something that only humans have, animals don't have that, but all in all, this is called the human ego, because what happens with animals, it's nature, they have to eat something, so they eat each other, no problem. We don't. We don't want to eat each other. We want to bend the other person. We want to show and see how can we, how much can we bend that person, bring harm upon that person, and that makes us feel good to exploit others. And so nature comes to teach us what are those bad forces that are acting in us? What do we have to do? 
And how can we advance toward the good? It's a long way. It is entirely related on part of nature to our education. It's not about putting pressure on us that we will necessarily have to do this because we have no choice. Great. I'm running away from suffering to pleasure. This is my nature. I can't do anything about it. This is how I am. It's above any calculations that I do this, and this is how everyone is. But nature wants for us to understand and agree that our social life is more important than our personal life, particular life, and nature is going to educate and teach us more and more in this direction. This why it takes time, and it will take really much suffering, problems, blows, disappointments, but we'll learn. We will learn. But this is what the wisdom of Kabbalah says, that this is actually the call of the hour. Does it have to happen through suffering, or, or is there a, a way to, to learn it without no. suffering? No, not by suffering. It's like parents and children. If a child listens and is willing to do something against his own will, what his parents tell him to do, then they don't punish him anymore. He was told once, if he understands, everything's fine. If he doesn't understand, then they put more pressure on him up to the point of punishments and so on. And we're already now in times where nature is beginning to be... To put serious pressure on us. This uh, initiative to determine the, the minimal uh, uh, dignified, uh, uh, I forgot what it's called, the, 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 the dignified living allowance, do you see it as a step in the right direction? Yes, but it's not only about that. The main thing is our relations, the relationships between us. To make a more or less equal standard of living for everyone, you have to bring society to a level where it will want it, for everyone to want it. The rich and the poor and everyone, and that everyone will feel that we have no choice, that this is the good thing, that this is the just thing, that it's higher justice. And if we don't do it, we'll have serious problems. We, really, I see this as a basic requirement by nature, so much so that we won't have time to bury all the people that will die. Unless we do it, it'll be a very harsh blow, unless we bridge the gap between us and nature, between the changes. And maybe on this uh, positive note, quote-unquote, we will end our show for today. But uh, really, we have, to, we have to get going and do our due diligence and uh, do our work on education. Thank you very much, Dr. Lightman, for your time. Thank you all for watching. Come watch us next time as we advance toward educating humanity. Until then, all the best and bye.